In this video, we're going to talk about the concept of indirect perception. So we can look at perception in this certain simplified way. So we can think about an external world and that external world might result in sensory data being collected. So we could have um, sounds, you know, movements will cause sounds to happen and this might be picked up by our ears. Or um, we could be touching things in the world and receive sensory data or seeing things, whatever it happens to be. Then, of course, um, sensing is not the same as perception. So um, any, any, my my camera on my phone um, can sense, it can take a photo, it can record some sound, but that is not necessarily the same thing as it perceiving. Does it have um, some kind of understanding or analysis of what it's looking at? And of course, as technology marches on, increasingly the answer might be yes. But it's important to remember that um, sensory information, sensing the world, is different from perceiving it. Now, before we get um, onto the core topic, it's worth pointing out um, that we can do these endeavours called psychophysics. And there are two kind of flavours of this, really. The first one is called outer psychophysics. And um, this endeavour tries to understand how um, the external world, aspects of the external world, so stimuli that you present in an experiment, relate to a certain perceptual experience. And when you do these types of um, experiments, you'll, you'll show people stimuli and then you'll ask them to respond according to uh, what they perceive. And so this whole endeavour is kind of psychophysics. So psycho relating to the kind of perceptual experience and physics relating to the, uh, the truth, the external world. Now, of particular interest to us at the moment is another flavour of psychophysics, that is inner psychophysics. And I think many people would basically claim that this is the problem um, that the brain is faced with. And this gets towards um, our present topic. So we could imagine that the perceptual experiences that we have is informed by the sensory data that we get. That is the only, or the yeah, the only source of data that we have about the world. The key concept here is that um, we don't necessarily have direct contact with the world as such you might be able to kind of look at the world or you might even be able to touch things in the world. But what is it that your brain is really getting? Is it a direct contact or a direct measurement of the world? Or is it via sensory data? So this is the issue of inner psychophysics. How does the brain result in a perceptual experience based upon sensory data? If that's quite kind of abstract, here is a pictorial um, demonstration here. So we've got a bunch of um, people here looking at a, a silhouette which is projected onto the screen. And so what we have, this is um, an analogy, I guess, where we have um, the real world is the puppet being held up with a light behind it. And you can imagine all kinds of things going on here. Um, and this would this would project onto the two-dimensional projection screen. Um, this is um, the sensory data that you might measure. And what you then do is the, the issue of where does the perception come from? Well, it's based upon the sensory data that's projected onto the 2D screen. I think this is actually quite a good uh, way of thinking about it because on the left here, the real world can be complicated and three-dimensional and the sensory data is being recorded on this flat two-dimensional sheet here. And so conceptually, this is 
um, the same thing that's going on in the real world where light bounces around and the lens projects this light onto the back of the retina. And so you're going from a three-dimensional world to a two-dimensional projection um, of on your retina. Now, we're going to delve briefly into um, philosophy. So this is um, kind of essential if we want to understand indirect perception and related issues. So the first thing to say is that um, there is a philosophical approach called uh, direct perception, also known as naive realism. Gibson was one of the advocates of this approach. And the idea here is that um, you directly perceive the world. So what your perception is should map on directly to the thing actually um, being observed. What that means is that all of your perceptions should essentially be veridical. They should be accurate um, to what really is going on. They should be um, unambiguous. So um, under this approach, it doesn't really leave much room for your perceptual experience to be ambiguous. Now, there are two clear problems here. Um, one of them is, well, they're, they're related, in fact. So one of them is the fact that illusions exist. So on the side here, I've shown a Necker cube. And if you find that you, if you stare at this long enough, what you'll find is that your perception of the three-dimensional nature of this cube might flip. So over time, you might realize that there are two stable perceptions that you can have of this stimulus. So this is this is um, not only just kind of interesting, but this is concerning for the direct perception approach because um, the stimulus here is not changing. And so I should perceive something which is not changing either, um, as well, rather. But it is changing. My perception is changing, but the stimulus is unchanging. And so that doesn't quite fit with the predictions of direct perception. Another kind of issue, um, I mean, it's not entirely unrelated, to be honest, but um, you can have perceptual ambiguity. So it is not always the case that the sensory measurements you, you make of the world is sufficient to really tell you exactly what's going on. For example, if um, I think this is most common in the real world, for example, if um, you're trying to communicate with a member of your household uh, about, you know, what they want, they might they might shout something from a couple of rooms away. And so it, it's, it's quite hard to hear. Maybe the washing machine is on. And so, you know, maybe they said one thing, but maybe they said another thing. Um, and so it's hard to square this idea of being uncertain about the state of the world if we are supposed to um, directly experience it. This leads on to the notion of indirect perception. Um, this is also known as representationalism and I would say that this is this is a philosophical approach. It's one taken by a lot of um, cognitive psychologists not that they have necessarily thought much about it explicitly, um, but I think that this is actually quite important in the foundation of cognitive science. But indirect perception, in a way, is actually quite weird and quite freaky, but in another way, kind of almost must be true, depending how you think about it. Indirect perception claims that you do not directly perceive the world, so that's fairly straightforward. What it does propose, though, is that what you actually experience is your mental model or a, re a representation of the world. And so in this cartoon here, we have um, in, in grey, we have 
kind of like the real world where we have a person um, looking at a house. Now, the person is not directly perceiving the house. Instead, the person is perceiving their own mental representation, their own mental model of the world. So I think if this is a completely new idea to you, it can be somewhat subtle. Um, It can also be rather strange. It reminds me a little bit of a classic film called The Matrix, where humanity has been enslaved by um, a bunch of robots. And the reality of these people's situation is that they're sitting in these um, pods Um, but they are being fed different sensory experiences, um, so that they actually believe, um, that they are just going around the world as normal. Sorry if I've ruined that film for you, if you haven't seen it. So indirect perception kind of solves this issue, um, the problems that we're facing direct perception of kind of illusion and ambiguity, um, because let's think about it if if you are perceiving your mental model of the world and your perceptions change but the world doesn't well that's kind of fine because maybe your mental representation of the world is changing and if that's what you experience then fine um you know there's there's no problem there however Um, One of the challenges for indirect perception, and it is essentially the homunculus problem. Um, And so if the argument is that we don't just have a person who's directly experiencing the world, we instead have a mental model in someone's head, then does that then just push back the explanation of what or who is it that's experiencing the mental model? So this is um, an example of the homunculus argument. And so you might say, well, there's this other observer inside your mind, inside your brain, who is looking at the mental model. Um, And so this this is one criticism that has been um, directed towards indirect perception. Um, I don't know if it's really a fundamental problem because um, it is certainly the case that we do not know how a mental model directly gives rise to perceptual experience. That is not a solved question. Um, So we either have to answer that question um, that would be an alternative kind of issue that cognitive science has to deal with other than just labeling it as um, the homunculus problem because it, it all just comes down to where, at what point and how does a perceptual experience arise based upon data. So we could... Um, and another way, if if that's not quite clear, we can revisit our kind of intuitive silhouette show picture here and kind of notice that it might look kind of nice and intuitive the way how um, they have drawn a bunch of um, children and a dog looking at the screen. But this doesn't really solve the problem because, well, we just have people with their own eyes Um, you know, the light from the silhouette screen is just being projected onto their own eyes. And so there's nothing about this which actually explains where perception comes in. Nevertheless, I think that this is a very good um, diagram to illustrate that this is the problem that the brain solves. I personally don't see how we can have direct access to the external world um, that kind of clearly has to be via sensory information. The issue is just how the debate is, well, how do we go from there? And 
how on earth does perception arise? So that's it. I hope this video was informative.